Hi, this is Walter Smith III, and this is First Look. Walter, uh, welcome to Blue Note Records. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Don. It really is a pleasure to be here with you. <laughs> the album is absolutely exquisite. Every time I listen to it, I hear something new. There are many layers to peel away. It goes, it goes really deep. And I guess it's also the third installment in your Casual series. First, your debut album was called Casually Introducing. Uh, then in 2004, you released Still Casual. And now we return to Casual. Is there is there a motif tying these three albums together? Absolutely. Uh, as you know, um, and I've mentioned this to you before, but the name is the ridiculous part that you cannot get rid of. But the the real thing um, that ties them together is the growth as a composer. Um, the first album um, I recorded, I think, in 2004, somewhere in there. And it was uh, the first music that I ever wrote, which was about three months before that album. Um, and it really did not feel representative of what I wanted to be as an artist, as a musician. Um, so I set my sights on just growing as a composer, um, not knowing that that would affect all aspects of uh, how I approach music. But that's what I spent all the time from that first album into the still casual um, album working on. Uh, studying scores, taking lessons, asking questions from friends, from other composers, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that record to me represents like a very, an, an arrival at like a foundational understanding of how to compose. So like finally getting into the point where I felt like I had like a method behind how to compose and how to get uh, different aspects of music on paper and to convey that to the band. And uh, this album is a continuation of that. It's a growth of that same aesthetic type of music with that same band, but like a an updated um, approach to to music for that for that particular group. When you talk about expanding the boundaries of composition and, uh, and arrangement, is there a way to describe how that manifests uh, on this album, but but for non musicians or yeah, of course, of course. Um, I think the, so. The difference, even looking at the music on the previous album, uh, which is about ten years ago, to the one that's there now, um, I felt very proud of those songs and like the the way that they were written. And there were sections, and there was you know I did all that kind of stuff. But I I did feel like it boxed everyone in in the way that they had to improvise over them. Uh, there was a lot of space, but also it was very specifically directed that way. Um, so the way that this music has kind of grown and I've grown a little bit as a composer is to still write all that information, but find a way to kind of leave it a little more open ended. Um, so more of a choose your own adventure book than uh, a book where you read the back of it and you kind of already know what's going to happen, but then you still read the whole book anyway to get you know, the, the journey, but, uh, that that's kind of the difference. That's a really good analogy, man. Uh, I'm wondering how you prepare yourself as well as the other musicians for playing through these songs. I, I don't think you can just drop a lead sheet down in front of them and say, go, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. how do you re you know, it, it seems like it takes time to find the shapes and the angles and all the possibilities you want to explore a little bit before you hit the studio. How, how do you do it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess ideally we would um, be doing this. I've been in some bands where we're, we're writing on the road and playing it at sound checks, sometimes at the concerts. Um, but in this situation, it was a lot of me just writing at home. Uh, I write on the piano and then um, after I get it kind of close to finished, um, I will create demos and logic um, and I send those to everybody. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's like the collaborative thing, like with Kendrick, I'll send them to him and he, he'll he play an idea. You know, I'll, I'll describe what I have in mind, but show me what you are thinking. And then he'll send it back to me. He'll record it and send it back. And we kind of go mm -hmm. back and forth that way. 
That's that's really good. I, but there's this like the song River Sticks, man. That that's a very wild song. It's got a lot of harmonic movement and you know, maybe more than giant steps even. I, I I did try playing along with it. It's easy for the bass player because you can just pedal a, a C note through a lot of it, but but it's very challenging to play f- uh, fluidly through most of those those changes, those voicings, which you do. You do it. F- you play fluidly and very soulfully. So when you write a song like that, do you consider the consequence? Well, I guess you do. You, you think about the consequence. You're going to have to play through this and find new things night after night. Uh, and is the challenge part of the process of writing that you that you want to challenge yourself night after night? Yeah, of course. And then there's there's also that what you just mentioned. You can think of it as a simple thing. It can just be in C, or you can access all the other information that's happening. Right. And it really gives you options about even within one solo how you you know what you want to deal with because all of it. Uh, it all works together no matter what you're doing. All right. Well, it's a great song. Let's play a little bit of it. River Sticks. That's Walter Smith III from his new album, Return to Casual, a song called River Sticks. The first single off the album, Contra, uh, it gets uh, the compositional inspiration uh, from a very unlikely source. Tell us about that song. Yes, um, we also uh, lovingly call it our $4,000 song, um, which I'll <laughs> tell you about later. But um, <laughs> it. It comes from a video game code, uh, a code in a video game called Contra, uh, which would allow you to get 30 lives if you entered it at the title screen. And it's up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. And then that gets you in there. Um, so this is a like a, a writing prompt that I kind of gave myself a while ago to, you know, if I'm ever like in a rut or I sit down and I don't have anything that, that comes to mind to, to work on as a composition, I'll pull out these old things that I've been trying for years. And I've tried this one several times, but never really got to anything. Um, so I pulled it out and tried it again for this composition cycle, I guess. Um, and it, it kind of worked out. So the pattern is literally just picking a note to start on. In this case, I think it starts on an E and then following the, the, the code. So up, up, so going up twice, then down, down, and then left right left right and then the note b a and then that's kind of what it does and it's moving throughout (laughs) that's so cool man let's play a little bit of that That's uh, that's Contra, Walter Smith III from his brand new album, Return to Casual. Shine is one of my favorite tracks on the album, man. It it, it builds to such emotional peaks every time it, it goes around the, the thing. It, it actually kind of takes your breath away at that point. It's, it's really uh, an exhilarating track. T- tell us about that one. Yeah, it's, I mean, it definitely takes my breath away to play it because it's <laughs> such a long solo. But um, <laughs> It, it was written, I wrote it during the pandemic with uh, 
you know, there, we all have a lot of stuff that we took away from that uh, time in our lives. But uh, this was about some of the people that we lost during the time. And it was one of those things where um, they all had uh, an impact on me as a musician at different stages in my life. And people that have been around forever and you just always thought you'd see them. And then, you know, we go into this hibernation and then everybody doesn't always come out of it. So um, those people in particular were Jimmy Heath and Wallace Roney and Alice Marcellus. Um, so it was just in dedication to them really. Um, so that kind of feeling and the emotional aspect of it, that's, that's kind of what's behind it. That's yeah, beautiful, man. Let us play a little bit of Shine. That's a song called Shine from Walter Smith III's new album, Return to Casual. But let's talk a little bit about uh, the musicians on, on the record. Same group that is the casual group, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got Taylor Ixty on piano and Matt Stevens on guitar. Um, and both of those guys, when we did the last one, um, I, I called them for a specific reason, um, and it... I guess everybody in the band uh, fall, falls into the same category, but they're they're very ensemble driven. So everything that they're doing is less about making a splash or making um, putting themselves out front. It's more about that big ensemble sound and building um, intensity without you know kind of being over the top. Um, like you'll see, we'll play a slow song and I'll look over at Taylor and he's like doing this, which, you know, you generally don't see people doing in a slow song. And he's really doing it. He's like sweating oh. and you don't even hear it, but you feel it. You know what I mean? And that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And Matt has a similar approach to comping and the way they play melodies. Um, Harish, uh, well, Kendrick is the Kendrick Scott is the drummer and he's like the, you know, I've, he's the person I've played with the most. We went to high school together. Um, so I've been playing with him for a long time and the way that he builds and shapes melodies and he's very patient. Uh, so he allows things to develop and things to happen. Um, and then Harish Raghavan is the bass player who we always jokingly, well, Ambrose Akinwusuri jokingly calls like he's the instigator. And uh, so like in any band, uh, you need an instigator and Harish is that person where you'll be playing and we're all thinking ensemble and we're kind of like going towards this direction. And then Harish uh, decides <laughs> that we're not actually going that direction and then makes us all kind of rethink it. Um, I think of him as like uh, the Waze GPS, like, you know, I could stay on this highway and it's all arrived in eight minutes, but Harish is like, yo, if we get off right here, <laughs> seven minutes and 39 seconds. <laughs> So we go through all this other stuff to get there and we still <laughs> arrive, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's I a totally get it. That's a, that's yeah. a, that's a brilliant analogy, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great band. It's a great record and we're, we're thrilled to have it on blue note records, man. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for being here today. Thanks for watching everybody. And we'll see you next time on first look. If you enjoyed first look, and would like to see more, please hit the subscribe button and also click the bell icon. That way you'll be notified when we post our next video.